If you have each cell with a potential difference of 2 volts, when they're in series, it's 2 plus 2 plus 2, so it's 6. If you've got 4, it's going to be 2 times 4, and you're going to land up with 8 volts. However, when they are in parallel, the electrons can either go to the top branch and get energy, or they can go to the middle branch and get energy, or they can go to the bottom branch. And no matter what happens, they come out the other side with 2 volts of energy on the other side. So if they're in parallel, you will only get 2 volts in total. It's useful because it lasts longer, um, your batteries last longer, and also what happens, and we'll learn this later, is it decreases something called internal resistance, which means that actually the cell is a bit more, if the battery is a bit more efficient. It doesn't suck up too much energy of its own, so it decreases internal resistance, but invariably parallel battery connections are very much more expensive. If a cell has the potential difference of 2 volts, what is the reading on voltmeter number 1? So each one's 2, so it's 2 plus 2, so that becomes 4 volts over there. There's only one place for these electrons to spend their money. They come out, they've got 4 volts, they've got to spend it at that resistor. So that resistor is also going to be 4 volts. Over here, if we look at this circuit, it's again 2, 2, so this is 4 volts. And we've got two resistors this time, but they are connected in parallel. I want to show you something with colors. I go from the one side until I hit a resistor, and at that point I could have chosen, same thing over here, if I was an electron I could choose either to go to the top or to the bottom, to the top or the bottom. Now, there's an or situation over here. So that means that you can either spend your 4 volts at the top resistor or spend your 4 volts at the bottom resistor. But no matter which resistor you go to, you are going to spend 4 volts at that resistor. So when it's parallel like that, the resistors do not, their potential difference does not add up. It is all of that energy is used for the top, all of that energy is used for the bottom. So in all three cases here, it's 4 volts. In this circuit over here, you have got 222, two, two, so it becomes 6 volts. 0, 0,5 volts is used there, so it's 5,5 5 volts that has to be in the second resistor. What's important is these two resistors are in series, and therefore you can, you, all the energy that you left the battery with, you have to spend on the way. So you come out with 6 volts, spend 0, 0,5, you must spend the other 5, 5, and then come back home. Electrons always have to spend all their energy in the circuit. So that is going to be um, voltmeter number 6 would have had a reading of 6 volts, and number 7 is 5, 5. Looking at the next circuit over there, we told that it's 2 and 2 again which means that this is 4 volts, and we're told 2 volts is used at this bottom resistor. If I need, needed 2 volts to go on the bottom branch, I will need 2 volts to go on the top branch. And then I can say that my total potential was 4, I spent 2 on the parallel system, and I must spend 2 over there. Not because 2 is equal to 2. For example, if that by some coincidence had been 6 volts, and we had spent two on the parallel system, then this would be four. Okay. So, <clears throat> it's going to be four volts, and then two volts. Each has a potential difference. What's the reading on voltmeter 10? Two, and on voltmeter 11, also two. Now we've got ammeters. Both of these ammeters are on the main branch of the circuit, and so they're going to have the exact same reading. What is the reading on ammeter number 2 here? Also on the main branch, so it's 3 amps. When it gets there, there's a split. 1 amp goes to the bottom branch. It's kind of like 3 people going to the movies. 1 person goes to the bottom movie, and 2 people will go to the top movie. It'll cost them the same amount in energy, or if you want to think of it as money, but they are going to go to split up to go to the two different movies. So it's 2 amps there, and it's 3 amps over there. 
What is the reading on M meter 4? Let's look at these M meters. We've got 5 amps, nothing on the main branch. This is the main branch of the circuit. So there's been some splitting. While I'm on this branch, if 2 amps have chosen to go that way, 2 amps will go all the way there. So we, M meter number 4 is that. I had 5 all together. 5 people went to the movies. 2 of them went to the top movie. How many went to the bottom movie? It must be 3 amps. <coughs> If more cells were connected to this in series, you are going to land up with a brighter bulb. If more cells were connected in series, the current strength would increase. And if I put more cells in series, there would be more energy coming out and therefore you would need to spend more at that light bulb and the potential difference would also increase. If on the other hand I connected more cells in, par sorry, in parallel, then I would land up with the same brightness of the bulb, the same um, meter reading, the same voltmeter reading. The only thing that would change is how long it would all last for. Here we've got a series circuit. I put one extra resistor in circuit L. That means it's more difficult to get through circuit L. And therefore K will be bright and L will be dim. Why? Because there is more resistance in L. So looking K all the resistors were identical. Which bulb shines brightest and why? K shines brighter because the circuit has got less resistance than L. Over here we've got a slightly different situation. Here my resistors are connected in parallel. The more resistors I have in parallel, the less the resistance becomes because I'm making the road wider and wider and wider and therefore easier. So in this case, L will burn more brightly because that circuit has got less resistance. What do I know about ammeters on this series part of the circuit or on the main branch? They are all going to be equal to each other. Here, I find that voltmeter 1 and voltmeter 2 are connected, one over the whole parallel network and one only over the resistor in the one branch. The only thing on that branch is that resistor, so it's the only thing sucking energy. Meaning that if it costs me 10 Rand to go to that movie, or 10 Rand to go to that movie, or 10 Rand to go to that movie, it would cost me 10 Rand to go to the movies. So those two voltmeters are going to have exactly the same reading. I am told that the reading on ammeter 1 is 2 amps, that ammeter 2 is reading 1 amp, and a meter 4 is 0, 0,2, so then what's left? It's as if two people went to the movies, or if you like, 20 people went to the movies, 10 of them went to the top, 2 of them went to the bottom, 8 of them would have had to have gone to the middle movie. Or 2 amps comes along, 1 amp goes to the top, 0, 0,2 amps goes to the bottom, and therefore 0, 0,8 amps must go to the remaining ammeter, ammeter 3. Now we've got all these voltmeters. I'm told voltmeter 4 has got 30 volts, I'm told voltmeter 1 is 10, and voltmeter 3 is 5. So, if I was a little electron and I had to come and spend money, I would go, I've got 30 rand. Oh, I spent 10 rand there, I still need 5 rand to spend there, which means that I must spend 15 volts over there. What is the correct relationship between the ammeter readings? Well, I'm one little electron and I have to go all the way through there, so it will be exactly the same all the way through.